Is it possible to sell crystals in 2024? Absolutely, and here's how. We've been selling crystals for over 20 years, so we put everything we know into an easy to follow checklist so you can sell crystals confidently and consistently. Now, whether you have an existing store and you're looking to expand into the crystal market or you're brand new, this is the guide for you. Every year, more and more people are getting exposed to crystals and learning about them, which means the market for people buying crystals is growing. It only hit the mainstream a couple of years ago and it's far from being done expanding. There's tons of examples of new budding entrepreneurs in the space who are putting their own unique spins and set them apart from the rest. Each one more successful than the last. But there's one thing they all had in common. They had everything in this checklist checked off. And if you wanna follow along with me, I go into way more detail in the description below where you can also print out a copy of it. This is all stuff you can do in the next seven days to get your crystal business rolling. Starting off with market research. This might sound intimidating, but it's actually really simple. And odds are, you've probably done it already. Basically just means looking at how the market is doing right now. Whether you're selling in person or online or both, there's a few things you can do here. You can visit local markets or crystal shops and see what's out there. See how many people are checking things out. You can see what kind of products are selling. What crystals are they selling? If they're pairing that with other items or services. Get a feel for the vibe or theme of the store. Are they going for more of a nature aesthetic or are they going more witchy? This helps you get an idea of what's going on in your area. Is it more health and wellness people or is it more mineral collectors? What age and gender demographics are we looking at here? What kind of price points are we looking at? If you're looking online, go visit Etsy or Instagram stores and see what other shops are in your niche. Whether you're looking in person or online, you're going to want to look for three things. Do they sell similar products as you? Do they have a similar vibe that you're going for? Do they tell the same story that you want to tell? If you answer no to any of these three, there is a gap in the market for you to fill. It might be tempting to say, well, there's plenty of crystal sellers out there and that is not true at all. There are so many ways to find the gap in the market that you can fill. Let's take this for example. Here's a product that we see online pretty often, crystals inside of candles. And then here's another product, candles that are meant for specific intentions. Now we decided to combine both of them, candles that have specific intentions with crystals and herbs that match that intention. With this simple concept, as well as some savvy marketing, we managed to sell out the entire stock of it in our first week, making it one of the best selling products in the rock space. All from a simple concept of combining two existing products together. Now take a look at the crystal space and see how many other combinations you can think of. See if you can pair them with an existing service that you already do, or some way to integrate it into what you already know. You can take the same product and market it to two different people. You'll get completely different customers for both. Let's talk about goals, something to reach for. Now it's always important to aim high. You wanna make sure that you have a step-by-step -step plan on how to get to where you wanna be. You wanna set goals for yourself that are realistic and easy to measure. Now obviously you wanna be successful selling crystals. That's a great start. What steps do we need to take to get to that point. This is where setting long-term and short-term goals are very important. Let's say for a long-term goal, you want to double your sales month over month for an entire year. This long-term goal is easy to measure because you just have to look at your last months of sales and see if you're measuring up to it. Setting these long-term goals will tell you what short-term goals you need to set in order to reach that. So if you want to double your sales every month, perhaps this week you'll try to attend more shows or spend more days reaching potential leads. You could have as many long-term and short-term goals as you'd like. Your long-term goals don't have to be on a yearly basis. They can be for a decade. Your short-term goals could be daily, weekly, or monthly achievements. Make sure you write your goals down in a journal and check them often. Celebrate when you hit your goals and set your next goal to be higher than that. If you didn't reach your goals, take a look at what you can do differently so that you hit it next time. This way you keep getting better and you get closer to your goal. Now, a lot of crystal sellers waste a lot of time and effort because they did not set out a clear goal or plan from the start. Now, a key part for your crystal business is figuring out your three uniques. These are things that make you different and stand out from others who might be selling similar products or services as you. These are three things that only you have and that customers come to you specifically for, no one else. This way you attract the right type of customer who's coming to you for the exact problem that they have. A common mistake that new businesses make is trying to appeal to everyone. They spread themselves too thin. They wanna be everything to everyone. This doesn't work. Instead of spreading yourself too thin, knowing your three uniques helps you focus in on what truly makes you special and what you're best at. You can do this very simple. Just list out everything that makes you unique, anything that you can think of at all, and then narrow it down to the three things that stick out the most to you. For example, we at Stonebridge Imports adhere to these three uniques. Great customer service, new things all the time, and bring value to the community. This is a chance to think of a gimmick that sets you apart from everyone else. Maybe something you give with every purchase or something to make it much more personalized to them, such as setting a specific intention or affirmation, or sharing your extensive knowledge with them so they can use your product much more consciously. Whatever that is, that is your niche. That is what sets you apart from every other crystal seller.
Now, one of the biggest things that new crystal shops struggle with the most is marketing, specifically branding. Having a strong brand helps you sell more by showing customers that you are trustworthy and a legitimate crystal seller. Mixing your personal story with your business can help you stand out, especially when you're just starting out your shop. But it's important to show that you're serious about what you're selling. If your social media is nothing but cats, people might get confused over what it is you're actually selling. Adding personality is good, but you should first and foremost look at how you're selling your products or services. Knowing your market and your uniques helps you decide how to narrow that vision down so you are reaching the customers that are for you. Now, you don't need to just look at other crystal shops for inspiration for branding. You can look at completely other industries, tea shops, yoga studios, restaurants, supplement stores, heck, even life coaches. For example, when we were developing the Rock Space, our retail brand here in Kitchener, we looked to popular skincare companies for inspiration on photos, website design, as well as colors. We wanted our crystals to feel like they were part of the wellness world, just like skincare was. And because everyone already knows what skincare looks and feels like, it was very easy for us to just slap our crystals on top of that same vibe. Having a logo is the first step in having a strong brand. This is a reflection of who you are and very often the first thing that a customer sees. It should match the vibe of your business, but it should still be recognizable and stand out. Let's take this logo for example. This is for a fictional brand called Mama's Gems. Now the goal for Mama's Gems was to create a comforting and warm environment. To give them that same warmth and comfort that a mother's hug would give them in the form of crystals. Now how can we turn this logo into something that invokes that feeling? Well first off, we're gonna have to take a look at this font. As it stands right now, it's very hard Hard to read. If we just zoom it out a little bit, it becomes completely illegible. Not to mention that icon as well. It doesn't really hit that vibe. In fact, you kind of have to explain in order for people to actually get it. But with a few simple tweaks, we can make it so that we keep that same handwritten font, but make it way more readable and use an icon that's much more fitting for the vibe we're trying to achieve. See these differences? And again, there's no problem with taking inspiration from other sources. It doesn't even have to be Crystal Shop specifically. If you want to try designing your own logo, you can use Canva's free logo designer, or you can also hop on Fiverr and find someone to do it for you. Now, selling crystals is a very special industry. You chose this path for a reason. It's because you want to help others. Perhaps crystals had a profound outlook on your life and that's something you want to share with others. Perhaps you're a practitioner and you want your clients to have something they can work with when you're not around. Maybe you're an interior decorator who thinks that everyone needs a little bit more magic in their life. Whatever your story is, whatever reason you decided to start your business, that is a story you should absolutely share with people. Because at the end of the day, it's not a sales pitch. You are providing something that you genuinely believe in. And when you tell people your passion that you hold for these special gifts, that's something that they take with them as well and they're more likely to trust you so share that story simple and from the heart let people see the love you have for what you are doing now where are you going to share this story well that's where having an online presence comes in very handy it's like having a big sign that tells everyone where to go in order to find everything they need to know about you not everyone's going to remember everything about you the first time you meet them it's always important to have somewhere where people can go after they've met you or if they tell their friends about you. You don't have to have a fully fledged storefront ready to go. It just means that you have somewhere where all of your information and how to contact you is placed. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. You can use a Facebook or Instagram page or just a few static pages on a website you made. That's more than enough. The main thing is to tell your story and let people know how to contact you. This way people don't have to search online for hours on end or start digging through their receipts to try and find your name. And it's not something you have to keep constantly up as well as long as it's running and it works you're golden even if you're not ready to sell anything at this very moment it's still important to have up and running that way when you are ready to get going you can just hit go live with a click of a button and you are hitting the ground running now second part about having an online presence is having social media now let's get one thing out of the way you do not have to be famous or post every single day to sell tons of businesses have social media for one simple reason people trust brands that have an active and current social media it shows that you are indeed still in business and that you're serious about what you're doing serious enough to take some time out of your day to talk about it Stories are a great way to achieve this. You're already putting in this work. Why not show it to people in order to build that trust with them? Peel back the curtain, be transparent about who you are, what you're doing, where you are. This way, people will start noticing your business just by you being you. Pretty soon, it'll be like second nature for you to post online. You might see more active following from it. You might see people going to your social media in order to ask questions or get in touch with you or make requests from you. It's another way for customers to reach you. Now, as you continue to post, you might see your following grow and you want to get better and better at it. The online space is constantly changing, especially so with social media. There's a new trend every week. There's a new social media platform every year. But there's one rule that remains consistent across all social media throughout all the years, and that is to post good content 
consistently. Now, this doesn't mean you need to make a full-fledged Scorsese film every single time you want to post. It just means that you have to hit a certain threshold of quality so that it doesn't get lost in the slog of everything else on social media. See what quality content you can produce on a daily or weekly basis without spending the entire day making one video. Everyone thinks that just posting anything, anything at all, is the right way to go. But it has to be exciting enough for someone to actually want to engage with it. From here, you could turn this into actually selling stuff online. Now, what I hear a lot is that social media is king and business cards are irrelevant now. That is completely false. A lot of people think it's purely for business to business transactions, but it's so much more than that. It is your entire brand on a little piece of paper. For example, let's say you send out your amazing product to someone and they have their friends over and they go, wow, this is so amazing. Where did you get this from? And then the customer says, I'm not sure. Let me find out and get back to you. And then they never do. Having business cards is a very easy way for your customers to do your marketing for you. And if you have an online presence, those potential leads will be going down the same experience that initial buyer went through. And with Vistaprint, as well as tons of local print shops, you can get business cards for as low as 20 bucks. Now it's important to remember that business cards are a reflection of your business. So put a little effort into it. If people see a business card that's not very strong, what does that say about the rest of the business? Putting that extra little effort to make your business card awesome puts you ahead of everyone else who didn't. Now, one last thing to talk about in marketing is your growth strategy. Now, this just basically means continue to do what is working and don't do what isn't. I know, sounds simple, right? That's because it is. Regularly check in on what's working and what isn't. Now, the best crystal sellers make use of both in-person and online sales. You might be attending markets every single weekend, but what are you doing during the weekdays? You could take this opportunity to do live sales during weekdays or spend more time gaining potential leads. For example, let's say you switch to another city to do business in this weekend and you know that you're sales doubled compared to what you usually make. Well, maybe it's time to look into doing more business there more regularly. Conversely, maybe you gave live sales a try for a month and it's not seeing the sales that you'd like to see. It's important to stick with something and tweak it a bit to make sure you've really exhausted all your options before canning it. Don't fall into the sunken cost fallacy. If it costs more to keep up with it than would be for you to cut it off, cut it off. This means that you should keep experimenting though. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Your next breakthrough could be just around the corner. So stay flexible, keep trying new things and keep tweaking them till you find that winning formula. You can try 15 different things, and if one of those things nets you 100 times your initial investment, then that was absolutely worth it. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the budget. Specifically, how much is going to cost to actually start selling crystals? Now this all depends on whether you're selling in person or online. Your lists for initial startup costs could vary greatly. But it's important that you hit all the check boxes before you dive into it. Thankfully, now more than ever, it's a lot easier to start a business. There's tons of resources available that get you jump started quickly and more affordably. You want to hit the ground running, not going at a snail's pace. For example, if you're selling in person, it's kind of a given. You're going to need a table as well as a tablecloth, maybe a dolly and some display stands to make your stuff stand out. You might want to look into some advertising banners or posters to make your store pop. You're going to need a point of sale system somewhere for people to transact with you, such as Square, a mobile accessible app that just lets you do the purchasing right from your phone. No need to buy any expensive computer equipment. If you're selling online, you're going to need a way for people to transact with you, whether it's on Etsy or Facebook Marketplace, or you're going to create your own store using Wix. Squarespace or Shopify. Each of these comes with their own pros and cons. Etsy makes it incredibly easy to start up your shop and start selling online now, but they do take a cut from every transaction. Facebook Marketplace, it's incredibly easy for you to start selling, but it's full of low quality listings and it could be harder for customers to gain trust in you. If you decide to make your own website, you have total control over everything and you don't have to worry about anyone else cutting into your profits. However, it could take a good degree of technical skills, time or money to get going properly. Whichever route you go down, you're obviously gonna need products to sell, which is why we put together the Crystal Shop Starter Kit. It's a collection of all of our best selling crystals so you don't have to put in any of the guesswork for product research. Or if you want a more personalized selection, we're a quick call away from from figuring out what products will do best in your store. Now, it might seem like a lot at first, but you're gonna recoup your costs in the first month or two. So everything after that is just gonna be pure profit and gives you more budget for you to expand and grow your business. There are also some recurring costs that come with running your crystal shop as well, depending on where you're selling and how big your store is. Now, that's not to mean that this is a bad thing. In fact, spending more budget typically means that your shop is growing. 
Now, let's say you're spending an extra $500 this month on advertising, but that $500 has generated $2,000 worth of sales. That's $1,500 that it's going right back into your business. Some examples of recurring costs could be vendor fees that marketplaces charge you for selling in their space, or packaging and outbound marketing materials such as bags, business cards, not even mentioning the gas and travel costs that come with exploring markets outside of your local area. Transaction fees can also happen online as well. A lot of marketplaces will take a percentage of your sales, not to mention monthly fees on website maintenance if you decided to create your own website. You might decide to go down the route of paid advertising and boosting social media posts. Finally, the cost of shipping and the added extra packing material you're going to have to make in order to deliver your products safely and securely. It might be tempting to try and reduce these costs down to zero, but it's always much easier to bring more money in than it is to find or to cut money out. And remember, you are not alone when starting your business. There are tons of grants and opportunities for you to help grow your business. Look online for your local municipal grants page or business Facebook groups, forums, government programs, or private groups that are looking for a specific project or business. Most of these just take a short application you can get done in 20 minutes. It's free to apply. Putting in that extra little effort every week can net you a huge boost to building your business. And don't forget that networking is key in finding these opportunities. Make sure you plan how you're going to use those funds, budget it down, look at your growth strategy and your market research and see where best you can spend those funds. Keep searching for new grants and don't get discouraged if you don't get them. This is a good way to scale your business just by the virtue of who you are. If you completed this checklist, do you got a solid groundwork in order to stand out in the market, make your customers happy and grow your crystal business. So it's time to make your first few sales. And this is just scratching the surface of running a crystal business. If you want more specific tips on how to grow your crystal business, we're always available for a quick chat or a long-term success plan. Using our market research and plenty of lessons that we've learned while running our shop, we're ready to pass on to you. Book a call or send an email, let's get you selling. So I wish you luck and I'll be with you every step of the way.